You are glorious, so glorious in Yahweh. You are glorious, so glorious in Yahweh. You are glorious, you are glorious, so glorious in Yahweh. You are glorious, you are glorious, so glorious in Yahweh. Oh, you are glorious, you are glorious, so glorious in Yahweh. You are wonderful, you are wonderful, so wonderful in your way. You are marvelous, you are marvelous, so marvelous in your way. You are merciful, you are merciful, so merciful in your way. You are precious, you are precious, so precious in your way. You are precious, you are precious, so precious in your way. You are glorious, you are glorious, so glorious in your way. You are mighty, you are mighty, so mighty in your way. You are faithful. You are faithful, so faithful in your way. You are faithful, you are faithful, so faithful in your way. You are marvelous, you are marvelous, so marvelous in your way. You are marvelous, you are marvelous, so marvelous in your way. Oh, you are merciful, you are merciful, so merciful in your way. You are merciful, you are merciful, so merciful in your way. Singing Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, you are glorious, so glorious in your way. You are precious, you are precious, so precious. You are faultless, you are faultless, so faultless in your way. You are accurate, you are accurate, so accurate in your way. You are accurate, you are accurate, so accurate in your way. Oh, you are accurate, you are accurate, so accurate in your way. You are accurate, you are accurate, so accurate in your way. You are mindful, you are mindful, so mindful in your way. You are mindful, you are mindful, so mindful in your way. You are perfect, you are perfect, so perfect in your way. Oh, you are perfect, you are perfect, so perfect in your way. Oh, you are perfect, you are perfect, so perfect in your way. You are perfect, you are perfect, so perfect in your way. You 
are precious. You are precious, so precious in your way. You are precious. You are precious, so precious in your way. You are merciful. You are merciful, so merciful in your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are still on building altars. Are you hearing me? We are still working on altars. So, today our topic is operating from an altar. Operating from an altar. As you are living from an altar, you are reigning from an altar, you are dominating from an altar. Remember where we are coming from? We have been building up from birthright. And we saw that the first approach to birthright is understanding the bet, which is the priesthood. And the first platform of priesthood is altar. Every priest have altar. When the Bible says we are royal priesthood and holy nation, God's people, that shows us that we are priests. And every priest must understand the way of the altar. Because after we finish understanding altars, then we can reign as king. Royal priesthood, royal, royal priesthood. If the priesthood, if you can master the priesthood, then you enjoy the royalty. There are many kings that are suffering. They are very poor. Are you hearing me? Yeah, go to villages, go to towns. You see some king, there's nothing to write to him about them. They are wearing crown, but the crown is empty because the priesthood have not been dealt with. Many of us are king, but we keep on living like an empty king, wearing empty crown because there's no altar backing up our priesthood. That will not be your portion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, God said believers should not build monuments. They should build altars. When you're trying to build a big mansion, build houses, build things that will stay after you build streets, those streets will be pulled down one day. If you build houses, those houses will decay one day. If you read about revival, read the histories of revival, you find out that a revival started in the United States of America, U.S., U.K., Charles Finley. All of them were from those nations. But what they built there, we appreciate their work, but they never dealt with altars there. And the way altar behave is what Jesus was trying to explain in the book of Matthew 12. Altar can allow you to do everything you want, build, uh, cause a huge revival, cast out demons, they will, be, they will do as if they are quiet. Then when your generation pass, they return again with full force. In Matthew 12, from verse 43, Jesus said about an evil spirit. He said, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, so evil spirit does not only live in men, they live in altars. They live in animals. They live in territories. We saw it in the man in, the, in Gadara, that the demons from the man said, don't take us out of this city cast us into the pig. So anything that possesses, they look for land because in land there's blood, in human body there's blood, and in animal there's blood. Anywhere spirit find blood, they can dwell there. So that means altar does not only refer to a monument, a place that is built, a statue that is already built, an altar can represent a human body. A territory can be an altar and an animal can be an altar. Are you hearing me? Recently, we were talking about uh, some Fridays ago, a man, the Lord identified a man through the word of prophecy that the dog, the dog 
that they had in their compound started biting people carelessly for no reason. And when the case was addressed there, I gave the man water of life. I said, go and pray for the dog at home. And the, the man said, all throughout that night, the dog was crying because a demon had possessed that dog and started using that dog to seek blood. That's an altar looking for blood. Are you hearing me? Now, Jesus said, if an evil spirit is cast out from a man or from a territory, it goes through dry places. This is what happened in all the revivals in UK, in America, in Colombia, seeking rest, and he finds none. Then he says, I will return back to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. That is why America is a lawless nation now. Your family look lawless. This is what Otter does. He goes to bring more wicked spirits than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that city, the last state of that man, the last state of that family, the last state of that territory, become worse than the first. He says, so shall it be to this wicked generation. So a revivalist can arise if that revivalist does not deal with altars, does not deal with projections, monuments that are already built after they pass, more wicked spirit will come into that territory. More wicked spirit will come into that nation. More wicked spirit will come into that family. I want you to know that the great revivalist was once here called John Gillick. And in this nation, his wife died. Why trying to feed the African people that were coming to the, her husband for prayers? She was so stressed, the man did not give her attention, and she died in this land. But where is the sign that the revivalist was once here? So it doesn't matter the revivalist that comes to a nation, a land, if it does not deal with altars. It can, you can cast that spirit, you can do many mighty works, even in a family. Maybe you are not the first Christian in your family. Maybe you saw your parents living as believers. They were serving God and you saw the end of their life that they were useless. That they were rendered to nothing. And when you grew up, you saw their life. You say, if this, uh, my father, the way he's praying, the way my mother is praying, if their life can remain like this, what about me? So why am I serving God? Even your children can look at your life and say, I knew my mother, I knew my father. They were going to church. They were good Christians. But at last... I didn't say anything about them. So why would I follow God? The reason is because you didn't deal with the altar. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes, altar can wait for you to train your children. It, it will be quiet. Primary, university, and the final year when they are supposed to be a blessing to you, when you are old, an altar can just speak and kill the children. That's how it behaves. It can be quiet, monitor your progress. And when it eats, it will make sure it's empty everything. How can a man of God that loves God start a ministry, the ministry grow to an extent, and just one mistake, one attack, the whole church scatter? It's not that man. It's not that mistake. It's an altar. How can somebody start a business and the business is growing making a lot of money. And when you look at that person's life, you can never point to say, this person will be poor. You can never, you say, the children of this person, his generation will forever be rich. But when an altar arises, it will reduce that person to nothing. I'm praying for you. Listen, don't ignore this season. This is not a, throughout this season, the month, it's not something anybody should miss. I said, I'm praying for you. Every altar waiting to embarrass you, they shall be brought down. Amen. I'm not hearing that, amen. amen. I'm not hearing that, amen. amen. You must understand. A certain time came when the apostles were going around preaching and they were trying to stop them. Then Gamela said something. He said, Don't trouble these people. If this thing is of man, he said, before them, two people have arisen. They gathered crowd. But when they killed them, their crowd scattered. They were trying to rebel against the Roman Empire. He said, if this thing that they are doing is from man, it will scatter. 
But if it is of God, you can't stop it. That means you are fighting against God. God is very, I want you to have the wisdom of God and the mind of God. There's nothing God wants to do that he does not build an altar. Now, God, anything God wants to do, he makes sure he builds an altar. Even the throne room of God, the, where God sits is an altar. When Jesus died, he carried his blood and went to pour there. So God is ruling the whole head from an altar. He's regulating, he's controlling you, controlling all church, even controlling hell from an altar. So there's nothing hidden from him. Are you hearing me, somebody? That's why the, cro the cross of Jesus is an altar. His body was the sacrifice. His blood was the life of that altar. The Holy Spirit was the controlling force of that altar. The angels were the watchers of the decree that came out of that altar. And the decree of the altar is that it is finished. So the reason why you see that no matter how they fight the faith, it can never die is because it was built on an altar. There's a blood on that altar. There was a sacrifice on that altar. There was a decree on that altar. I am praying for you today. You are erecting a new altar in your family. Don't be hypnotized and don't be deceived by the devil that there are no altars in your family. There are living altars. The way the devil used to connect each family to himself is by allowing one man in that family, each person, to raise a demonic altar, to connect to him. Why will you say the devil is in this family, is in this family, is in this family? He's controlling everyone's family through the altar. The devil is not omnipresent. He's not omniscience. He's an altar. So when he rose up in heaven to fight against God, he was embarrassed. He was brought down. He never knew that where God was sitting in heaven, it was an altar. So when he failed his attempt to rule heaven, when the, he was cast on earth, the first thing he started doing was building altars. So anytime a family comes, the first thing the devil does is to enter that family to build an altar. So he does not care the rest of the people that will come. Let him just find one man to build an altar there. And if that altar is already there, he can have control over the rest of people. He, are you hearing me? In the name of Jesus. This is the season for people's life to turn around. This is the season for God to deal with issues from the roots. Yeah. Every altar that is regulating your family, controlling your family, that altar shall be disgrace. Yeah. I say shall be disgrace. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I want you to take this season very serious. Very, very serious. You must know that you are the priest of that. This altar that Jesus raised through cross. The symbol, I told you that every altar have a symbol or sign or token. That's the cross. There are demons that if they see the cross, they will run away. Not even anything, just the cross. Because every altar must have a structure, a token, a sign to represent it. Are you hearing me, somebody? Say, oh Lord, oh Lord. this season, open my mouth to pray. Open my eyes to see. Open my ear to hear. Because there's war. There's war. Are you hearing me? There's serious war. And I want you to know that the target of every altar is the priest of that family or the Christian in that family. The light of that family. The hero of that family. Altar does not look for everyone. It look for the main person. Like you now, in that your family, you are the one the altar will hate more. You that call yourself a Christian because you are doing against the will of the altar. Are you hearing me? The Bible says in the book of Judges 16 from verse 23, Samson never knew that the Philistines erected an altar against him until the day they caught him. And they said, now the Lord of the Philistines gather together to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God, and to rejoice. And they said, our God has delivered into our hand, Samson, our enemy. So it was not Delilah that caught Samson. It was Dagon. It was an altar that was controlling Samson until he was reduced to nothing. I'm praying for you. Every altar, call your name. Any priest, call your name on a demonic altar. I command that altar to go down today. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray in one minute. Say, oh Lord, empower me, equip me.
Talk to the Lord. You will not be reduced this season. God wants to attend to you. It's time for God to attend to you. How can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind? How can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit? How can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind? The power at work in you, changing everything. In obedience to Christ. How can you rule when you don't know the way of the wind? How can you run when you don't know the way of the hotters? <laughs> How can you fly when you don't know the way of the priest? The power at work in you, changing everything in obedience to Christ. Please swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands is the key to eternal life. He's a little here and a little there. Till the day we done is out walking you, changing everything in my life. In obedience to Christ. Uprooting everything uprooting everything in my life in obedience to Christ changing everything changing everything in my life in obedience to Christ rearranging everything rearranging everything in my life in obedience to Christ scattering everything scattering everything in my life, in obedience to Christ, destroying everything, destroying everything in my family, in obedience to Christ, rearranging everything, rearranging everything in South Africa, in obedience to Christ, rebuilding everything, rebuilding everything in Johannesburg, in obedience to Christ. It's changing everything. It's changing everything. In Garten. In obedience to Christ. Rebuilding everything. Rebuilding everything. Oh, in our life. In obedience to Christ. Renovating everything. In possessing yes, yes. everything. In my life, in obedience to Christ, uprooting everything, uprooting everything. Oh. in obedience to Christ, arranging everything, arranging everything. Oh, in my life, in obedience to Christ, capturing everything, capturing everything. Oh, in my life, in obedience to Reorganizing everything. Reorganizing everything. In our family. Reviving everything. Reviving everything. In our nation. In obedience to Christ. Shelabata basu bradiagate. Melada basu brandegadesh. Paki zobada. Sekakaki akotwa, bro taki zovele, esha gigabara dia zovela da, merada bada dash, osa ne mane kama na ne 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 ne, shadi agaba le tavazi mana, kela na pali ya dekata, isolaman ge kute, keso balani ane he, tale sagida, shele ne mana na na. Go back at the pata sofa. Ataradi zobolo bolo dabe. Elegeba si da balabala gada. 
Zopara de Kerande. In Jesus' name. Authors, they look for the priest, the target. Because if they smite the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. Some of you are shepherd that God have raised in the family. The Bible said in the book of 1 Timothy 6, 2 from verse 1, it said prayer and supplication should be made. Prayer and supplication should be made for the leaders, those in authorities. Because if your president has been captured by an altar, the nation is captured. If your prophets, your priests, have been captured by an altar, the nation is captured. If the police have been captured, if your police is corrupt in a nation, all the nation is doomed because there will be wickedness. There will be killing and destruction. So authors always look for the, the head, the spare man in the family. It looks for the one that God has sent like Samson so that the day they catch the president, they catch the pastor, they catch the priest of the family, then they will, they will laugh and say, our God have delivered unto us our enemies. The one who has slain thousands among us. I'm praying for you, somebody. They will not catch you. There's war. Even if you don't know, there's war. And if you decide to ignore it, you will be among the slain that the altar will capture, that the altar will swallow. You will be among the blood that the altar will drink. Because the Bible says, a cry was heard in Ramah. Lamentation and weeping and mourning. Rachel was weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. In that realm of altar, in that realm of battle, nobody is innocent, not even a child. If a baby can be killed because they were looking for Jesus, Babies that know nothing can be killed. What of you? You are saying, what did I do? What have I done to people? You are not ready yet. If babies can be killed in the days of Moses, because they are looking for one Moses, they will kill anybody. And God will fold his hand and be watching. And say, I've given you authority. And you are lying altars to swallow people in your family. To swallow your life. All Christians have to arise. Are you hearing me, Somebody. Oh, David cried a lamentation in the book of 2 Samuel 3, from verse 32. A warrior called Abner. Abner was supposed to be a general that was working with Saul. But when Saul died, he was working with the, son, the grandson of Saul. So when the son rebelled, because God had given David the nation, the king. So Abner had a problem with the grandson of Saul, who was ruling 11 cities while David was only king to, in Judah. So Abner decided to say, okay, I'm going back to David. I want to support David because I see that God has given him the, the kingdom. So when he went to David, immediately he finished seeing David. Joab, David general, heard that Abner came to see David. And while Abner was going, he ran after Abner and pretended as if he wanted to greet him as a friend. And while they were still talking, he brought out his sword and stabbed him to death. And when David heard it, the Bible says David cried. He said, why should Abner die the death of a fool? Many Christians die the death of a fool. Many businesses will fall because many Christians are foolish, ignoring others. Others will wait for you. The day of your blessing, the day of your appointed time, that is when, that is when it will reduce you. And the king sang a lamentation over Abner and said, should Abner die as a fool dies? The next verse, he said, your hands were not burned, nor your feet put in filters. As a man falls before, before wicked men, so you fell. Then all the people wept over them again. I'm praying for you. You will not die the death of a fool. In the name of Jesus Christ. How can you be looking at the trace, the happiness in your family? Powers have been controlling your family. You saw your mother when she just turned 50. She became sick. And every, she used all the money she gathered for sickness. And you, you think it's because she was ignorant. She was not eating well. You, you are going to the gym. Authors does not look at your outward appearance. It does not care what you do. It will always find a way to manifest itself. Another thing you must know about altar. 
altars represent spiritual own. Own. They represent spiritual own. The Bible said in the book of Zechariah 1 from verse 18, it said, then I raised my eyes and I looked. I raised my eye. That is a revelation. He said, I look and there were four horns. And I asked God and I said to the angel, who talked with me? What are these on? So he answered me and said, these are on that scatter Judah. These are the altars that reduce this family. This is the reason why anytime this family gather, there's always scattering. Go back to 19, please. I'm not done there. He said, these are the ones that scatter Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. He's the one that is scattering your family. Anytime people want to lift up their head, verse 20, it brings those people down. Anytime ministry want to rise, it scatters the ministry. Anytime your business, your finance want to cross into another section, it destroys the business again. I'm praying for you. Any on rising up against you, rising up against your manifestation, rising up your, against your finance, it will be brought down. Verse 20 said, I saw and the Lord showed me four craftsmen. These are men that don't take nonsense. These are men that have discerned that there's an altar in the family. There are very few in families, but they are very powerful. He said, and I said, what are these coming to do? So he said, these are the ones that have scattered Judah so that no one lifts up his head in that family. But the craftsmen are coming to terrify them, to cast out the ones of the nation that have lifted up their own against the land of Judah and to scatter it. I'm prophesying upon somebody here. There's an, there's, there, 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 you are the craftsman. There's something in your hand. There's fire in your hand. There's authority in your hand. There's a sword in your hand to cut down every own that are pulled down the head of every member of your family. In the name of Jesus, say, I scatter family altars. I scatter territorial altars. I scatter witchcraft altars. I scatter family altars. I scatter marine altars in the name of Jesus. See that? Kubalata. E madivadosa. Brende sevadagadish. The psalmist said in the book of Psalm 92, from verse 1, he says, The good thing to give thanks to the Lord. And to sing praises to your name, O Most High. Three, to declare your loving kindness. Sorry, two, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings on the lute and on the harp with harmonious sound. Verse, 19, uh, verse 10 said, my own. Then you will exhort my own like the own of a unicorn. This is the secret. Whenever you are dealing with utter, you don't only pray. You dance and sing. Because, are you hearing me somebody? Because the emblem of an altar in your life is pain and sorrow. So anytime you are in pain, anytime you are in sorrow, it's an altar that is sponsoring it. If there's an altar controlling you, sometimes you can just be in your house, sitting on your own, and be getting angry. You'll be frustrated. You don't know what is remote controlling you. It's an altar. The altar makes you to begin to blaspheme about God. Begin to, it will tell you that God is unfaithful. God is not watching you. Why are you wasting your time? When you are alone in your room, it will make you to cry. That is the work of an altar. It kills you silently. But these pe people that have understand the mystery, listen, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. listen, anytime you feel like that, it is an on that is pressing you down. Anytime you are thinking like that, it's an on. That on is pressing you down. But if you can understand this revelation of the psalmist, he said, enter into his presence with singing. Immediately you start singing, the Lord starts exalting your on above that altars. Listen, the Lord is showing me an on. A on is rising from here. It's rising above the nation. It's rising against the city. Over, are you hearing me, somebody? Your own will rise above your family. Yes. Uh, let me tell you, who are those people you call global impact? The people that are making global impact are people that their own are break through their family, break through their city, break through their country, break through... Ay, 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 ay. Listen, your own is rising. I see on rising here. On, on. I balata. Every hiding must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You hear the victor's crown. You overcome. 
You overcome hey, every height it must come down. Every God that must be broken. We want the victory. You overcome, you overcome. Every height it must come down. Every struggle shall be broken. You hear the victor's crown. You overcome, you overcome. Hey, every height it must come down. See that? The Lord is working on people's life. The Bible says in the book of 2 Samuel 5, from verse 17, from verse 17, immediately the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king. They begin to gather to come and fight him. You are asking yourself, why are they fighting me? <laughs> you are, you know, you that ask God for blessing, immediately the enemy see that God have announced you spiritually to bless you. They will gather against you. Immediately you are asking God, give me baby, give me money, give me the city, give me the territory, give me my family, give me breakthrough. Immediately your name is announced in the spirit. How did the devil know that Jesus was in the mountain? Before Jesus went to the mountain, he was baptized and God made an utterance. Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. So the devil heard it and followed him to the mountain for 40 days and started tempting him there. Anytime God announced you in the spiritual realm, all the attack, all the pits of hell, all altars begin to fight you. Territorial altars, witchcraft altars, all the altars that don't know you before, they begin to fight you. And you begin to ask yourself, where is this problem coming from? It was your prayer request that was answered. Immediately, David was anointed king over Israel. All the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard about it and went back to the stronghold. The same thing Jesus did. He went to the mountain. Where is your stronghold? Your stronghold is your own altar you have made at home. Anytime they attack you, you go back to that place in your house. You go back to that your, uh, that your altar that you have built and you begin to pray in tongues. Immediately the altar will try to remind you why are you praying? You have a case that is against you. Your business is not going well. You will say Paul and Silas was inside the prison. And they see praise. You will begin to see pray again. Merada Sevalate. Ekaba Davuzase. Jelagadigo. Ama Sibron Dagi Kotaba. Jebran Dete. The author will say, Why are you praying? You are still barren. And you have been calling to Shiloh every time. You will say, Anna came to Shiloh. And the day she worshipped, the day she worshipped, that was when God remembered her. And gave us Samuel. You will keep on praying again. Are you hearing me? Somebody. You don't bow to altar. You break them down. Every nation have an altar. Every territory have an altar. Every family have an altar. Every person's life have an altar. They gathered together. He said they came to meet him. They were searched for him. The Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of Razin. So David inquired of the Lord. This is how to, how to fight an altar. Saying, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up. For I will doubtlessly, without doubts, unfailingly. And God is not a man that he should lie. God has said to you, Go and pull down this altar. That's what God told me this season. Pull down the altars in the nation. Pull down the altar in their family. Pull down the altar in the city. I don't care the altar that is in South Africa. He's hearing me. The altar know I know what I'm saying. It must go down. You are not saying amen like a believer. You, you, the way you are saying amen is as if you have, you have been cooperating with the altar to fight the church. Can you say a loud amen? 
Oh, you don't know why the churches in South Africa have been here rise. <laughs> yes, the altar. A woman, a woman of God here called Irene. She was a very powerful woman of God. She was in town before. And all of a sudden, one day, she just said, my head, my head, and she died. She's a prophetess here. Lockdown happened in every nation. But look at South Africa. The church is not yet back to normal. People are still sitting at home. Nigeria, everywhere is still flooded with people in church. They, only, they, they resist lockdown. They still want to go to church. But in this nation, everybody says, let us stay at home. Demons! The altars always provoke people to fight church, to scatter church. That is what the altar does. I didn't come for peace. I came for war. Jesus said, think not that I've come for peace. I came to set fire on the earth. Fire. Fire. Altars that we live, even if this generation, it's not this generation that Jesus will come. The altar that is going to be raised here, it will keep on speaking like the altar the Apostle Ayo Babala have erected in Nigeria. That's why no matter what happened in Nigeria, you can't affect the fate of believers there. There was a man called Apostle Ayo Babalola. He did not build monuments. He did not build big church. He built mountains. Literally, in Nigeria are his mountains. It was a prayer machine. It was a fasting machine. His revival was not about receive Holy Ghost. No. His revival was not the prophetic. His revival was addressing demons. His revival was addressing altars. That was just his revival. And he knew that if you must destroy altar, you must erect another altar. Are you hearing me, somebody? Even to date, I went to his mountain because he built a generational altar. That mount, those mountains are still functioning. They are generational altars. Nothing can temper with Nigeria, the fate of Nigeria. Nothing. No wind, no storm. Because he has erected altars there. All of us, all the great men of God are coming out from Nigeria because somebody erected altar. Which altar is here? Ask yourself. Altars of smoking? Altars of killing, destruction? Fighting foreigners? Is that the altar that is here? Children and youth are misbehaving? Looking for one boyfriend or another? Fighting and killing themselves? Suicide, depression? What is going on? And you are looking, you say, I'm a Christian in South Africa. If the altar finished with the people, it will also come to you. <laughs> you don't know. Let your eyes be open because you don't know where you are. There are some territory that when you come, you have to discern what is there. The, the kingdom of darkness, they know this thing. Many years ago, there's, a, there's an high life a musician in Nigeria called Perry Come. He is a very fetish man. He's an altar himself. He's that man is working. He's an altar himself. And he's connected to the marine spirit. Now he was coming to my village. And the, he, my village, there's a river there called Imo River. If you go there, you think it's an ordinary river. No, there's something there. When Perikom was coming, he came to the boundary where that river is. And he stopped there. For hours he was standing there. And after standing for hours, he turned back and went to pass another route to enter the village. Why? Imo said he will not pass. You are not seeing the woman there. We are only going there to fetch, to swim. <laughs> but somebody came to a territory and the woman in the river came out and was talking to him that you will not pass here. So both of them were exchanging powers right there for hours. Everybody was just seeing him that he paused there. And he turned back. And you, you are casually carrying your bag. I'm going to Johannesburg. I'm going to Prosper. I'm going to South Africa. I'm going to Durban. I'm going to United States. And the, the, the territorial power there tell you, welcome. <laughs> He's a man. These are men that have touched things in the realm of the spirit. 
today in the name of Jesus, you will have spiritual discernment. And whenever you enter a place, you will say in the name of Jesus, Kikasku Ari Atuvata. Only the land had what you say. Only the spirit in the land had what you say. You have just said, you land, hear the word of the Lord. A new lion have entered the jungle. There's a new dog in the yard. Haki Gavazuza. Selaki Tota. Hemaga Sevarata. The land will be subject to you. Authorities will be subject to you. Powers will be subject to you. In the name of Jesus. Believe me, this message is to turn your life around. You will never be the same again. All right, let's continue reading that story about David there. So, the Lord, so David went to Baal Perazim and David defeated them there. And he said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. Therefore, he called the name of the place Baal Perazim. But this is the shocking part. He said, and the Philistines left their images. There, and David and his men carried them away and destroyed them. So that means the Philistines never came empty-handed. They came with an altar. Oh, you don't understand. <laughs> you think they are just going to fight battles in vain. No, they came with an altar. The reason why David conquered the, the, the fight is because he went by the strength of what God said. Go, for I will doubtlessly deliver them to your hand. So the Philistines never came alone with their sword and their spear. It's you that carry your certificate, your CV, and just submit ordinary CV. Why, am, why people that are sitting in places are using altar to submit CVs? You are looking for tender. You are submitting paper. You are very qualified. Submitting empty tender. Why there are people submitting tender from altars with blood. And you are expecting to be victorious. You are going to open your shop in vain. You say, I'm going, today is Monday morning. You are going to open your shop ordinarily. There are people that have built altar in those places where you are building shops. May your eyes be open. In the book of Jeremiah 51, God opened our eyes there from verse 20. He said, Thou art, say, you are my battle axe and my weapons of war. It's true you are will destroy altars. Are you, are you seeing that? I will destroy altars with you. For with you, I will break down nations in pieces. So if there's no you, nation will not be broken. If you don't rise, the altar in your family will not be broken. God said, with you, not me, not in God, with you, with you. Somebody have to rise in the family. Somebody with the blood of that family have to rise. With you, I will stop that pattern. He said, for with you, I will break nations in pieces. Now, I want you to see that if there is no battle, there will not be battle acts. That shows that there is already battle. And if there's no war, it won't say you are my weapon of war. So there's a battle already and there's a war in your family. Just no, no, no now, no. There's a battle and there's a war. He said, with you I will destroy kingdoms. With you, I will break in pieces the horse and his riders. With you, I will break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With you also, I will break in pieces man and woman, the one that are servicing the altar. With you, I will break in pieces old and young. With you, I will break in pieces the young man and the maiden. With you. With you. With you. With you. The Bible says in Jeremiah 1 from verse 8, Jeremiah 1, 8. He said, do not be afraid of their faces. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Now the authority has been placed in your mouth to speak to those altars. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. 
See, I have this day set you over nations and over kingdoms to root out altars. To pull down altars. To destroy and to throw down. Then he said to build and to plant the altar that will favor you. Are you hearing me, somebody? Listen, you don't joke with altar. You, you embarrass it. If you don't embarrass it, it will embarrass you. Don't joke with it. Are you hearing me? I want to show you. Let us see what altar is. Number one, our altars are prayed. Let me just. Number one is that altars are the Jonah in your boat. Jonah on your boat. That is what altar represents in the book of Jonah 1 4. Jonah 1 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God. And through the cargo, now somebody was in their ship. That's what was causing this thing. The Bible says they threw, every man cried to their God. They threw their cargo, everything they went to buy with a lot of money, they threw it away to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship. He was hiding. That's what our altar does. And laying down and was fast asleep. I'm praying for you. Every altar that is pretending to be sleeping and destroying you, they'll be exposed. In verse 10, then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, why have you done this? For the man knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us, that our family may have peace? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. That's what how you do to an altar. Then the sea will become calm for you. So a whole sea was shaking because of one altar that was inside the boat. One man. <laughs> he said, For I know that this great tempest is because of me. That's what the author is saying. I'm the one causing the problem in the family. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to, to return to the land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempest against them. Then therefore they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah. You must pick up those altar and throw it away. The Bible says, and the sea seized his raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered sacrifice to the Lord. That's how you deal with altar. You throw it away. Number two, altars are a metaphor of Jesus in your boat. That is a positive altar. Luke 5 from verse 1. The Bible says, Peter was fishing. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. And saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from there and were washing their nets. Then he got up, he got into one of the boats, which was Simon, and he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boats. When he had stopped speaking, then the altar said to Simon, the altar, the godly altar, launch out into the deep. You see, many people have launched out into destiny without a positive altar backing them up. Many people have launched out into marriage without the direction of a positive altar. You don't launch out until the altar speaks so. Launch out into the deep and let your net for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toyed all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down my net. Now a new altar has been built you have been struggling for many years. Nothing was working in your life. But because a new altar was built, it was erected. And the altar spoke. See, now go and do your business. I'm praying for you today. Jesus will enter your boat. And Jonah will come out of your boat. Yes, yeah, so he cast their... Said, and when they had done this... They caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Now look at it. That river, they didn't go to another river. It was the same river where they had been toiling and nothing was happening. It was not a new net, the same net, the same boat, but a different altar. 
I'm praying for you today. Let a new altar be erected in your family this season. In the name of Jesus. Number three is altar can represent an Achan projected, projecting a cost allegation on the screen of your life, family, city, and territory. We know the story of Achan. If you're in the program, we read about Achan when he carried an Akos team. So authors can represent an Achan projecting a cost allegation on the screen of your life, your destiny, your family, your city. Joshua 7 from verse 1. The Bible says, And Israel, but the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding their costings. For Achan, the son of Camel, the son of Zidi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of their costings. So the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel because of one man. Then Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth Evan, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the country. So the men went up and spied out high. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not let all the people go up. Let about two or three thousand men go up and attack I. Do not worry all the people there, for the people of I are few. That's what they thought. They never knew there was an evil altar in their midst. Whenever an altar is fighting against you, what normally you will crush with your hand will be defeating you. Are you not seeing your dream? Sometimes your dream, you see somebody flogging you. Physically, that person can't flog you. If you, you know, <laughs> are you hearing me? Physically, if you see that person flogging you, the person should even run away from you. But to show you that when an altar is powering something, what you're supposed to defeat will begin to defeat you. Uh -huh. So about 3,000 men went up there for the people, but they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai struck down about 36 men, for they chased them before the gate. Therefore the heart of the people melted and became like water. So they became scared. That is what altar does. Then number four, altar is the entrance of Joseph into your life, your family, your nation. Genesis 39 from verse 1 to 3. That's what altar represents. So Joseph was, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him from the Ishmaelites and taking him down there. Mm -hmm. the, the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a successful man. Not only that he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his uh, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Uh -huh, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So because Joseph came into that family, everything the man was doing began to grow. Business began to grow. That is what altar is. So if you check your life, things are not going well, what altar is powering you? Are you hearing me? Now we have a great work to do. The, 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 the program for November is building, it's, it's, it's destroying evil altars and building godly altars. Are you hearing me? Very serious program. Because the Lord is going to fight for you and you hold your peace. Now, before we... Let me show you something. Let's look at altar in the case of Esther. Esther 2 from verse 20. You find out that the moment before Esther was elected to be queen, they hide her family where she's coming from because of the altar. Now, Esther had not revealed her family and her people, just as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther obeyed the commandment of Mordecai as when she was brought up by him. Because before the beauty pageant, the reason why Esther won, maybe if she said, I'm a Jew, they will stop her. The author will fight her. So the um, uh, uncle said, don't tell anybody who you are or where you are from. Are you hearing me? Yes. Now, in the book of Esther 3, from verse 1, a man rose up. Like I told you before, authors, I'm going to give you the description of author through this man. After these things, Ahasuerus promoted Eman, 
Haman was an altar erected against the Jewish people. The son of Amadam, the Egyptite, and advanced him and set his seat above the princes who were with him. And all the king's servants who were within the king's gate bowed and paid homage to Haman. For so the king had commanded concerning him. But Mordecai would not bow or pay homage. Mordecai was a Jew. Then the king's servant who were within the king's gate said to Mordecai, Why do you transgress the king's command? Now it happened, and when they spoke to him daily, and he would not listen to them, that they told it to Haman to see whether Mordecai's word will stand. For Mordecai had told them that he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow to, the, to him as an altar or pay homage to Haman, Haman was filled with wrath. Now, this is what is happening to many altars in our family. When we refuse to pay homage to altars, altars become angry with us. In your mind is saying, I'm a Christian. Continue, six. But he disdained. Now, look at this. This is where you know that it's an altar. He disdained to lay his hand on Mordecai alone, but they are told him of the people of Mordecai. Instead, a man sought to destroy all the Jews. One person looked for your trouble. You said all the Jewish people are your targets. This is how altar behave. A man sought to destroy all the Jews who were throughout the whole kingdom of Asaros, the people of Mordecai. That's how altar behave. He does not fight one person, he fights everybody. Altar can fight a whole nation. Are you seeing it? Now, verse 8. He went to the king. Okay, okay, verse 7. This is what altar first did. He casted lots. He said, when is the right time I can attack? This is what Otter does. Verse 7. In the first month, which is the month of Nisan, the twelfth year of the king Asaroth, they cast Paul, which that is the lot, before Amon, to determine the day and month until it fell on the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar. So he was trying to decipher in the realm of the spirit, which, is the, which month would be the best month to destroy these people. That's why you find out that if an altar is disturbing you, it can be affecting you in a certain month. Something will always happen to you. The altar casted a lot. Are you hearing me? Sometimes you discover that in a certain season, maybe August, they'll give you, every August, somebody must die in that family. Or every New Year. Or every December. So, according to when a man went to throw lot in the realm of the spirit. When he went to an abalis, a soothsayer, he said, when will it be the best? He didn't just go to destroy them on his own. He went to seek an altar. to say, when is the best time to put this man down? When would be the best time where his faith is low so we can attack him as a Christian? That's what altar does. They check the time your faith is low. You don't have faith again. You, you don't have fire again. You don't longer pray again. You are not loosed to any temptation. Then the altar says, hey, this is the right time to attack to the cast lot. Are you hearing me? Yes. There's one pastor. That pastor family is a polo, uh, poni, uh, pono, uh, polygamous family. His father had many wives. He started ministry at the age of 50. No, now, when he was 71, he has done ministry for 21 years. Then the altar that was quiet since. Do you know what it takes to do ministry for one year? Hmm. Or okay, two years, three there's no job as stressful as ministry. Are you hearing me? Yes, according to what they said, research said, one message a man of God preached is like a 40 days training of, a, of an army. Oh, you think he's just standing and holding my. No, 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 no. There's, there's energy going. So, now, where were we? The pastor, 71, when he was 71. They look for a, seven, a 21 years old girl. He did ministry for 21 years. So they look for a 21 years old girl. The girl came to his office. They caught him. They embarrassed him. They closed the ministry. Altar. When he went for counseling to Dr. Dikoluka, he was crying. <laughs> then the man of God asked him, say, Where, what, what family did you come from? How many wives are your father? He said, he said his father had many wives. Now he want to marry one. The other said, you are joking. He waited for him for 21 years. 
I'm praying for you. Any other calculating when to attack you, they shall be disgraced. In the name of Jesus. You see, many others have disgraced people the day that they are supposed to receive their marriage, Lobola. The author will wait for you to be cutting. You are cutting, cut one year, cut two year, cut three year. The year that they are saying we want to go for marriage, the author will say, Hey, Mary, have you paid your due? He said, no, you, 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 you must answer them in the realm of the spirit. You don't have power. You can tell them no physically with your mouth. In the realm of the spirit is, the, is where the spirit, because you are a spirit. Don't you see that every author attack you from the spirit realm? You, you think you are a human being. They see you as a spirit. So because you don't know you are a spirit, they will take you to their meeting without you knowing. Without your consciousness, whether you know or you don't know. They will carry you to the meeting. You are a spirit. Look. See this altar here now. You go to a, a Sangoma place or an Abalis place where there's an altar. You think this is what the altar is looking at? No. This is just a monument. It's the spirit behind it. This, your body, is like this monument. It's the spirit that is you. So this is what altars know. That's why somebody can submit your name to an altar. Call your name. You are not there. You are in America. <laughs> you are in Joburg. They are in your village. And they call your name to the altar. And the spirit in the altar, go. Call your spirit back home. They have summoned your spirit. And any, if, if, if they summon your spirit, know that any spirit that have authority to summon your spirit, you become a slave to that spirit. You are not hearing me. Hey, both of you, look at me. Touch that man. He's shaking in fire. You are, I know you are fire. Now, both of them, both of you look at me. Come like this. Just stay there. Look at this. Come. Say no. So you, you say no. You say yes. When I call you, come. Look at this thing now. Eh? Come. No. Come here. No. You see, if he's challenging me, I will try to know where his authority is coming from. Imagine if you, if a, if you, you are a police, somebody's driving a car, and the, when you get to where the person is, I'm saying, come down from your car as the police. Come down. No. You, do you know I will first humble myself? Then I will say, who are you? The question will change. Are you seeing it? Nigeria police. I'm teaching you, Nigeria police now, if they call you, uh, hey, park your car, start coming. Come. Once they see you are coming, hey, it does not say. They'll say, park where, park where, come here, park where, park where. Come here, kneel down here, kneel down. Yeah. Where's your paper? Yeah. Where's your license? Yeah. Yeah. Where, where, where's your paper? Any altar that can summon your spirit have rule over you. Any, I, <laughs> it's, it's physically you wake up and say, I will not bow. I will not bow. They'll say, okay, go and sleep. You will know that you will bow or you will not bow. I will not bow. Oh, oh, I will not bow. It's God that we serve. It's Jesus that we serve. In the realm of the spirit, you will know who you are serving. Are you hearing me? So this, your physical body, is just a monument. Is the spirit that the altar control. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. How do you think God is using to control you? Or if, he, if God is interested in you, you can't run. Why? Because when he finished creating this body, he breathed his breath inside you, the breath of life. If God should do, say, I want all South Africa to be saved today, today, yes. if he decide, everybody must be saved. Is it not him that put spirit inside you? It, you see your, your, your remote control in your house? Yeah? Your remote control. You say it's LG TV. The remote control is LG. That TV does not have C. Once you press on, it will on. Press off, it will off. Are you hearing me? So that remote is controlling that big TV. You, as big as you are, the only thing you can do is to blow the TV by force. 
But that remote does not need any distance. It can do like this. Anytime God decides to end the world, how will you go? Anytime God even decides to end anybody's life, or anytime God decides that everybody should be saved, you just need to say, oh yeah, it's my breath that is inside you. So he used spirit, he's using our spirit to relate to us, to communicate, and to have relationship with us. So also in the kingdom of darkness, altars, use your spirits to control you. So you should know that sickness is from the spirit realm. All sickness are in the spirit of a man. It's only manifest in the body. Poverty is in the spirit of a man. It only manifests physically. So if you can travel into the spiritual realm and correct it, physically, you will see a different manifestation. So if you can travel into the realm of the spirit, what we are doing now is a spiritual thing. We are destroying altars. You understand what we are saying now? Until you see your story begin to change. I, I didn't hear that. You are blessed. God bless you. Some of you are looking at me. The altar make you to shut up. You're looking at me. Altar like people that don't talk. Uh, why is it that in Jesus in the altar, I say it is finished. That word is still holding on today. He said their sins are finished. Condemnation is finished. Now, altar make you not to talk. It make you to cry. <laughs> now, I'm talking that you will begin to see new things in your life. The altar say, don't talk. So, you are looking at me. I say you will begin to see new things in your life. <laughs> now, verse 8, we are reading. Let's, I just want to give you an intro. Next week, we'll continue about this Esther story. Then a man went to the king. God is a king. This is how altars go to king. Then a man said to the king, there is a certain people scattered and dispersed among the people in all the province of the kingdom. Their laws are different from all other peoples. They do not keep the king's law. They do not, this is an altar. See, God respects altar because all altars speak on a legal ground. You know, see, their father gave, us, gave them to us and it's you that said every family that don't serve you you will punish them to the fourth generation you punish them yes, that's how altar speaks so the first thing you must note about a man as this altar that has been erected is number one altar have voices write it they have voices in the realm of the spirit altar speaks Is it not God that said in Isaiah, bring forth your strong reason? So if altar can go to your father, to God and say, this man is wrong. He's not paying his due. His grandfather said they should serve me. God will listen to the altar because he's a just God. God is a what? Oh, you don't know. <laughs> God is a just God. So God will listen. Is it not God that said to God was the one that gave uh, Israel to Babylon. He said, choose Nebuchadnezzar to humble them. So when uh, Nebuchadnezzar died, his son, Belshazzar, came up. And one day, he crossed boundary. I went to use the vessels from the temple. He went to be drinking wine with it, him and his girlfriend and his wife. And a judge from heaven said, mene, mene. Take care of us. You have gone beyond the boundary. You have been weighed and found one thing. So many Christians have been weighed. The altar found them one thing. You have been weighed in spiritual balance that your forefather said that oh, this man must serve us. This man must worship this altar. Your forefather spoke. Then the altar begins to have voice in the spirit. He speak against you. You are saying, no, I'm a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. No. The altar is saying, no, that's not what we agreed. When you are still in the loan of your grandfather, he said, over this, we, you must serve us. You must dedicate blood to us. Your children must be dedicated here. Why are you going to the church? You are breaking the covenant. You are breaking the agreement. And they will bring their strong reason to God. Just like Job came to meet God and said, does Job serve you in vain? Otter speaks to God on legal ground. 
Are you hearing me? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Uh, uh, you see, four from verse six. See, they are destroyed for lack of what knowledge. He said, therefore, I've rejected them as priests. Do you know who is a priest? The one that stands in the gap and talk to the spiritual realm. So when you lack this knowledge, you are just shouting, uh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. The author will be saying, after you finish Holy Ghosting. If you see the happenings in many Christians' lives, it's because they are challenging authors. They enter into territories they don't know. They, they just go anyhow. Molo, molo, molo. They enter a place, just go and take a business, take a place as a shop, take a place as a house. They are just living carelessly. But today, there are wise priests that are rising up here. <laughs> wise priests. Knowledgeable priests. Okay, verse 8, you see, Nema was, uh, Emma was speaking. That's how Arthur speak to the king. This, you see, the book of Esther was showing us what happened in heaven. First of all, it first showed us Esther that was uh, uh, Queen Vashti as Lucifer that was dethroned. Then Esther was like Jesus that humbled himself and she was enthroned to marry the king. Now, it now shows us again that so it can also speak about Arthur's a man erected herself as an altar. I told you that a human being is an altar because as far as there's a structure, there's blood, the man have a spirit. He's an altar. And he has voice to speak. So how you know an altar? Is the altar has what? Voice? We are reading it gradually, isn't it? It has a what? Voice in the realm of the spirit. And if human being, to any man, talk, Every human being has voice in the realm of the spirit. So if somebody should say, it will not be well with you, why did God say you should reverse it back to that person? Because that person has a voice in the realm of the spirit. That person is the spirit that is talking. Are you hearing me? He said, these people that are scattered and dispersed among, he said, they have their own law. They are not following you. And they do not keep the king's law. Therefore, it is not fitting that they should remain. So number two is that it has laws and rights. Authors have laws and rights that he determine his subjects to adhere to. It has an already written decree, laws that your father placed there that maybe every one year you push to sacrifice blood there. Why is it that if you really answer your ancestral call, how many of you have answered an ancestral call before? Be sincere, then you repent. Don't you have a certain time this ancestor tells you to sacrifice? Huh? They are quiet. If I point you, the ancestor will say they need blood at this time. That's the law. And if you don't bring it to them, they're going to attack things in your life. Many people that were in something before. Working in good job office, they have car. When these spirits in their family will call them that they should be a sangoma, you go and attack them. They used to wear suits before. All of a sudden, the team will attack them. They will start fighting them in their working place. They, if you, if they go to sangoma, sangoma will say you have a call. Now the team will fight them until they sell their car. They become in debt and they will go back to the village. It's a demon. Say I'm going to answer my shasha car. It's hell that called you. Hell, I've stripped you naked. One way to know the devil have come to you is when he stripped you naked. When he caught Jesus in the book of uh, Matthew, the Bible said they stripped him of his garment. The madman in Gadara, he stripped him naked. Mm, that's what he does. He's the thief. He stripped naked. Let us strip him naked. Those that say yes, the devil will be stripped naked in your family. Somebody say, I want to strip him naked. Whenever we are preaching about altar, we are stripping the devil naked. He's, he's not happy. He's saying, what are you talking about this? Many people have rise in this family and they went down. They don't know why. The devil stripped them naked. All right. So let's read again. Let's continue reading. That man is a bad man. 
It's an altar. And I'm praying for you as you are reading this. Anyone giving God any accusation against you, they'll be silenced today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 9, it says what? If it pleases the king, let a decree be written that they be destroyed. I told you that altar has decree. So write that altars are platform for making decree. That man was making a decree that all the Jewish people should be killed. Altar are platform for making decrees. I told you that the decree of Jesus on the cross was that it is finished. People that, even spiritual people, nobody, nobody make declaration or decree until they are standing on the altar. They begin to speak. So that is it. Then, um, let's continue again. He said, they should, he said and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver. You see the price? Sacrifice. All altars. So, right? All altars are activated with sacrifice. He said, I will pay silver in the hands of those who do the work to bring it into the king's treasury. I'm praying for you. Anybody sacrificing blood to embarrass you, may it backfire. Any altar they have sacrificed on to restrict your family, to cause defeat against your family, I command that sacrifice to be rendered useless by the blood of Jesus. Say, blood of Jesus. Destroy every sacrifice offered against me in every evil altar. In the name of Jesus. The next verse, 10. So he took his signet rings. I told you altars must always have signs, symbols. So he took his signet ring. The, he took, so the king took his signet ring. God approved. It was God that approved Job to be tested. So God can approve an altar to attack you. If the altar produces a strong reason. Can allow. It was not, it's not his... It's not his will, it's his permissive will. Because you didn't come. Okay? Why did God call Jesus our advocate? I will teach you how to go back to that altar. Are you, are you, you are not hearing me. I will teach you how to get back to God and say, listen, this is what is happening in my family. Remember you said so. Remember you, are you hearing me? Yes. You must come with a strong reason. So the king took his signet ring from his hand and gave it to a man, the son of Hamada, the Egyptite, the enemy of the Jews. So write that altars are authorized by signs, signet or token. So some of you here, the way you were small, they gave you mark on your body. Is the mark, is the token, is the sign to prove that that altar owns you. So that you are sleeping, a witch come in your dream and pinch you. Why did you think they pinch you? They are trying to mark you to show you are our own. That's the meaning. Are you hearing me? But I'm praying for you today. Every evil mark in you, it will be wiped away by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Verse 11. I will just stop here for today. So I will continue. And the king said to Haman, the money and the people are given to you. That's what God said to the author. To do with them as it seemed good to you. So I wrote here, when altar, when altar provides his evidence to God accurately, they are granted legal ground to operate. That's what Amon did here. But Esther's arising here. In the book of Proverbs 11 from verse 1, let me show you why the king approved everything that this person said. The Bible said, dishonest case are an abomination to the Lord. So if you but a just weight is his delight. So if your father said something and you are going against it, if your forefather said something, you are, you are according to God, it's a dishonest case. <laughs> you are quiet. Your eyes are opening today. Verse 12. 
Then the king's scribes were called on the 13th day to write it down spiritually. And a decree was written according to all that Haman commanded, the author commanded to the king, etc. To the governors, see, he was calling spiritual authorities in high places who were over each province, to the officials of all the people, to every province, according to a script, and to every people in their language. In the name of the king Ahasuerus, it was written and sealed with the king's signet. Meaning, authors submit people to spiritual authorities, rulers of darkness in high places. So you can travel to England, the author has submitted you there. Why is that you travel to this place? The same thing that was happening to you back there is happening again. Or you go to a new job, people start fighting you there for no reason. You left a old relationship into a new one. The same thing happened. How did the other person knew how the first one treated you? They were abusing you in the first one. They are abusing you in the second one. Somebody was raped in the family. Another person raped again. How did the author know? How did the people know? It's the author. It has submitted your name to rulers of darkness. The decree has been submitted and presented. I'm praying for somebody today. Wherever your information has been submitted by family authors, I withdraw your information. In the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 13. I'll read verse 13 to 15 together. Look at all the, look at this now. And the letters were sent by couriers. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were spreading it to all the country. Every city. It was spread by couriers into the king's province to destroy, to kill, and to annihilate all Jewish people. And author have made so. Both young and old, both innocent and no innocent. Little children. These are now author fight a nation, a family. Little children, women. In one day, on the 13th day of the 12th month, according to what was cast, the lot that was cast, say on the 13th day of the month, which is the month of Ada, and to plunder their possessions. A copy of the document was to be issued as law, Jesus, in the spiritual realm. In every province you go, the same thing is happening. That they should be ready for that day. So even if you are a man of God, you say, let me go to Japan. The demons are ready waiting for you there. They know. You are a businessman. Let me run to U.S. I think there's more opportunity in U.S. The same thing that happened to you in Nigeria, the same thing that happened to you in South Africa will happen to you. If you are in your village, the same thing will happen because it has been careered. <laughs> Spiritual career. Okay, let's read that. I mean, is your eyes open here? Is there, and the decree was proclaimed in Susan, the citadel. So the king and Amos sat down to drink, but the city of Susan was perplexed. 16. Okay, we are not going to deal with 16 next week will continue. Now, what I want you to write there for that last one is that author also convey his decree to territories and to people. Now, you find out that people are treating you the same way and author have conveyed your information to them. The same thing is happening in the family and author conveyed your story to them. So, next week, we'll continue how to address this issue. Are you hearing me? The fire of God will come on you today and you will destroy every evil water. The Bible says when... First of all, I want us... See, this season, this season we are talking about altar. I want to make you know that I said human beings are altar. So the beginning of the altar will be you. When God has made you an altar, then spiritually you will build altars also that will guide you and your children generations to come. Do you know that the day, the kingdom of darkness, they stole the ark of God. The Philistines, they carried the ark of God to their altar. Place it before Dagon. Dagon was another altar. Altar against altar. So when Dagon saw that a mighty altar have come, Dagon fell his face down. And the Philistines said, no, it's a mistake. The next morning, they went to erect Dagon again. And Dagon stood again. The next night, God embarrassed Dagon the more. Bay! He fell. His two palm cut off. And they said, no! This is another mistake again. Let us bring our Dagon up. 
The third day, when they rose, that gone up. This time, God was angry. He caught the two leg, caught the two hand, scattered him on the ground. Then God started bringing sickness into the land. You will be that altar that if anybody temper with you from now, they will be embarrassed. If any demon from any territory, whatsoever they have heard before, whatsoever they have stolen from you, that they have kept in their altars, your blessing will be a torment to their kingdom. Your name, your picture, your business, your money, your children will be a torment to that kingdom. Whether you are in South Africa, you are in Johannesburg, you anywhere you are, you are a living altar. He said you are a royal priesthood, an holy nation. You are a living stone. In the name of Jesus, I turn you to a living altar. Every territorial altar will bow to you. National altar will bow to you. Family altars will bow to you. Witchcraft altar will bow to you. Marine altar will bow to you. In the name of Jesus. Altars. Living altars. What I'm seeing now, you don't know this word I'm preaching. I'm building you as an altar. I'm erecting you. Now when they see you in the spiritual realm, they will know that you are not just a Christian speaking in empty tongues. You are not just a Christian quoting scriptures. You are a Christian that have understood the legal ground of the realm of the spirit. You are a Christian that have understood that you need a horn spiritually and your horn has been exalted. No horn will press you down again. Even when they are using others to cancel, whenever you step in, they will know that somebody that knows the rules, the, right, uh, the laws have stepped in. If they are saying, if a doctor sees that you are sick, the doctor brings your blood to say, um, this is where your sickness is coming from. That is what the doctor says. Because the life of that person is in the blood. Because that is why your, your, your blood came from your father. So anything your father did is in you. If there was any sickness in the family before, the blood is in you. So that's why altar can speak. Because altar live with blood. Yes. But now if you now say, listen, I knew I was born from this family. I knew I carried the blood of this family. For some years, I was carrying that blood. But a certain time came. I found another altar. The symbol of that altar is the cross. The, the, the sacrifice on that altar is the body of Jesus. The blood on that altar is the blood of Jesus. The spirit controlling that altar is the angels. Is, is, is the Holy Spirit. Is the quickening spirit. The watchers of the decree of the altar are the angels of God. And the decree of the altar said it is finished. The cross is finished. The pain is finished. The sickness is finished. The poverty is finished. I am a priest from that altar. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You are a new altar. You are a new priest of the new altar. You are a new priest. You are a new priest. You are a new priest. Kelefeta Kiko. Baradia Shegaba. Man Severe Kadabala Kate. Kelaba Baria Kata Bariando. I shagabala te Ela Gaba Zikede. In Jesus' name. I told you that altar speaks. That's why Jesus spoke in the altar that is finished. 
any decree that was passed on the altar, even the spiritual realm, take it as a law and a token. I'm teaching you your rights. As a priest, you need to know your rights to strengthen the king. Your kingship will begin to emerge because you are beginning to know your rights as a king. Are you hearing me? I'm erecting you as a priest in that family. Amen. Hear me and hear me very well. I have not come to tell you a cunning device or fables or old wife stories. I came to tell you the decree from heaven that your life will begin to change now. As you are dealing with others that have been holding your wealth Holding your career, holding your finance, your life will begin to change now. You will begin to be who God wants you to be. The authors will not control you again. It will not control your finance again. It will not control your children again. In the name of Jesus. Sing this song. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me, thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me, thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me, thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me, yes. thank you, yes. my Lord. Yes. Yes. Thank you for yes. saving me, thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me, saving me, saving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. He made last of all time. He made love. He may la saputa, he may la o. He may la saputa, he may la o. He may la saputa, he may la o. O she u ba mi ma, o she u o. Adupe baba, o she u o. Hallelujah. O she u ba mi la, o she u o. O she u ba mi la, o she u o. He may la saputa, he may la o. Ime la zaputa, ime la o, hallelujah. Ime la zaputa, ime la o. Ime la zaputa, ime la o. Thank you for saving me, oh. Thank you for saving me, thank you, my Lord, hallelujah. Thank you for saving me, thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me, thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me, saving me, saving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for redeeming me. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Listen, I want to see you shake your body like who, who understand what he's saying. If you know you have been saved from that altar, you will dance and praise God like never before. You will be so excited. For saving me, saving me, saving me. Thank you for saving me, saving me, oh. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. 
Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. He may last a good time. He may love. He may last a good time. He may love. Hallelujah. He may last a good time. He may love. He may last a good time. He may love. Oh, she who. I do pray, Baba. Oh, she who. Oh, she who. Bamila. Oh, she who. Thank you for saving me, saving me, saving me. Thank you for saving me, thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Uh -huh. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Thank you for saving me, thank you, my Lord. Saving me, thank you, my Lord, hallelujah. Thank you for saving me, thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me, thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me, thank you for delivering me. Thank you for saving me, thank you, my Lord, hallelujah. Thank you for saving me, thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me, thank you, my Lord. La 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 la. I make a decree over your life that your own shall be exalted. This season you must dance rigorously, pray rigorously because you are building an altar consciously. I say dance rigorously, praise rigorously, because you are building an altar consciously. Yeah. Are you hearing me? In the name of Jesus, this season, may the Lord give you weapon, yeah. equipment, yeah. spiritual tools yeah. to build a fortified altar yeah. and destroy the evil altars. Yeah. I make a decree that the sins of your family is forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Ancestral sin forgiven. National sin forgiven. Territorial sin forgiven. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. That is the decree of the new altar. It is finished. Barrenness is finished. Delay is finished. Poverty is finished. Untimely death is finished. Gathering and scattering is finished. If you have not given your life to Christ, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. In case you are here, you are not giving your life to Christ. Or you give him and took it back. An altar is what is controlling you. you. You serve God on fire today. Tomorrow you are back. There is the altar that is controlling you. So, you have to surrender totally so that you build fire continuously. Are you hearing me? Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. Clean my name from the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me the grace to serve you sincerely with all my soul, my spirit, my body, my mind, my strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Now walk up to three covenant people. No, no, no. Seven covenant people. Tell them the new author said it is finished. Are you ready?
Truth TV is inspiring the world by bringing the message of hope in these dark and difficult times.